now for another bike review. This time we've got a pristine example of a 2006 Kawasaki ZX6R. The ZX6R dates all the way back to 1995 and was heavily inspired by the ZX9R of the time. The ZX6R was born into the now famous Ninja series of sports bike, a title which it still proudly displays to this day. So as you'd expect, Kawasaki made a lot of changes to the ZX6R in the 25 years it's been around um, to keep up with competition from Honda, Suzuki and Yamaha. In 2003, Kawasaki made one of the biggest changes where they um, increased the capacity of the engine from 599cc all the way up to 636cc. Now, I often see people getting confused with the ZX6R and the 636. They are exactly the same bike, um, just between the years of 2003 up to 2007. Um, it had the bigger displacement engine, it's still a ZX6R. Now, Kawasaki did make a ZX6RR during those years, um, and that maintained the traditional 599cc and that was to ensure eligibility for any um, displacement restricted super sport racing. In the 2005 onwards bike by what we've got here, Kawasaki further refined the 636 engine um, with bigger cams, a new head and polished ports. The 636 engine is what this series of the Ninja is best known for. Uh, the engine produced a claimed 130 brake horsepower which at the time led the uh, way in the super sport class. Under the right conditions this bike got hit just shy of 170 miles an hour um, which is really impressive from a stock 600 even by today's standards. We've got preload, compression and rebound adjustability in the uh, forks up here at the front. Also the shock back here is fully adjustable. The brakes, uh, we've got 300mm discs up front uh, with four piston radial mount lead calipers and then we have a 220mm disc over here at the back. So just before we get out on the road, as with the R1 and the TL1000 videos that we did last month, this bike is here today with us courtesy of JD Comps. Um, now JD Comps have given us a few cracking bikes over the last couple of months to play with and the best part is they give uh, you the chance to win the bike that's been featured in the video. I challenge you to find a ZX6R in this spec in better condition than what this one is here. Um, be sure to go over to their website, get your name in the hat, I'll leave the website in the description section. <laughs> So instantly only a few meters down the road it's instantly apparent how uh, how smooth the bike is to ride gear changes are silky smooth clutch is nice and light I'm just going to be taking it easy here really the the tires are cold we've had a ferocious amount of rain over the last couple of days the roads are really slippery. I mean, it's running the stock exhaust, which doesn't really help in the sensation of speed. It's really, really quiet, actually. Um, the stock exhaust, particularly sports bikes, were you know, generally renowned for being not sounding the best anyway, but so so quiet. This, I think, is possibly one of the quietest bikes I've ever rode. It does have quite a unusual exhaust note. Um, I'm not sure why it actually really reminds me of the um, a 675 Triumph, obviously. The Triumph's a triple, this is a an inline four. I, I, I don't know why I get that sensation. It's a very, very different bike to the Triumph, but quite reminiscent of it somehow. This thing is so quiet. I'm, I'd be very surprised if it's even picking up any exhaust note on the uh, on the microphone. Just crying out for a, a louder pipe. So I guess while we're waiting to get going here, it's probably a good chance to talk about the comfort and just the seating position obviously not long set off but the bike feels very comfortable there's loads of leg room um, not too much pressure on your wrists obviously the ZX6R really mirrors the ZX10R it's big brother um, and to be honest it actually feels much bigger than a 600 uh, I mean it's very wide fairings on the on the front especially and the, the big nose cone um, I'd be interested to have a comparison with the, Z the ZX10 and the ZX6 together because I really don't think dimensions wise there'll be a whole lot to it 
one thing I'm not a huge fan of, to be honest, is the, um, the speedometer. Or, well, not so much, not so much the display itself, but more the um, kind of got this LCD screen here that shows the RPM. And uh, I'm riding with a tinted visor at the moment, and to be honest, I can't tell at all what RPM that's running at. Now I know when you ride the bike, obviously. You don't religiously sit and stare at the RPM, you, you go by the feel of the bike and what you can hear. Um, but I mean, to see the red line on this bike is, I think, 16,000 RPM. So, I mean, you could definitely be up in the 10,000, 11,000 RPM. And obviously, the bike's going to be screaming and you'll probably get the perception that you need to change up a gear. And actually, in reality, you've probably got five or 6,000 more RPM that you can get through before you need to gear change if you're really pushing the bike hard. One thing I'm a big fan of is the uh, the mirrors, as boring as that sounds. I mean, they don't look anything special, but they're solid as anything. When you try and move them, they're so, so stiff. And there's no vibration at all in there, which is really nice. So there isn't really a whole lot in ways of um, technology, really on this bike as is the case with many bikes from this era you know this bike's 2006 so that's really from a time when rider raids weren't really a thing um, so there's no traction control no ABS or anything like that uh, we do have a slipper clutch uh, which a day like today we're probably not going to get too many benefits of but it will certainly aid you with those um, aggressive downshifts I must say the seat's really comfortable actually, it's definitely one of the more comfortable bikes I've been on recently. The way everything kind of flows around you, you kind of feel more like you're sitting in the bike rather than sitting on it. Um, you know, the fairings here really curve around your arms. Um, the tank similarly down here, hugs your legs in nice and tight. You've even got a little indentation here, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, where your chin can go when you get your, knee, your head under the bubble. We're really, really lucky with the weather today. We're currently early October. Um, not that that really makes a lot of difference in England. The weather's just pretty naff all year, but early October now, and and the uh, the second lockdown in England was just announced last week. Actually, starting tomorrow. So we kind of rushed this, bringing this review forward a little bit. Um, obviously, as this bike is up for grabs as a competition, by the time we come out of lockdown on the other side, the bike would have already been given away to somebody. So we had to move quite quick, really, really. Fortunately, the uh, the weather was on our side. And even though the roads are quite wet, we've had a lot of rain over the last couple of weeks. It's, uh, at least it's dry, the sun's come out a little bit. On these sweeping bends, the bike's just... Just seems to float from corner to corner. Really effortlessly, actually. So I'm a little bit dubious to be overtaking or anything on this road. We've had a lot of flooding over the last couple of last couple of days, so just do my best really to take it really easy. really pulls hard in the mid-range which is quite refreshing for a 600cc machine I mean if you saw the 600 RR review I did a couple of months ago and it's quite often the case to be honest with Super Sport 600s yeah they can feel a little bit frustrating at times to um, just to get the power down the power band's always really high in the RPM Whereas release, I mean, I guess just having that extra 30 or 40 cc might not seem a lot, but it really makes all the difference. So just at that mid-range there, just I dare say the power delivery is probably a, a little bit more. Um, quite similar to riding maybe like a GSX-R750 or something like that it definitely 
feels much much bigger than the 600 high quality is good the bike stays really well planted mid-range it's so much power there usable power as well it's just ready to go straight away so it's funny like so the bike feels so big uh, like you can see the shadow on the road there like it, it looks and feels much much bigger than the 600 cc um, but it only weighs about 165 kilograms dry which Compared with the claimed 130 brake horsepower that the, uh, the 636 engine gives off, and it's no wonder this bike's so much fun and so popular. If you are looking at maybe getting a, a ZX6, I would definitely recommend um, either one of the earlier ones with a 636 engine like this one's got, or I believe it was 2013 they actually brought back the 636 variant. Uh, we're getting back into the uh, town a little bit now I think we'll maybe find somewhere to pull over and we'll have a little bit of a summer rise and give you my closing thoughts after spending the afternoon on this bike well what a cracking little bike uh, this was my first time on a 636 version of a ZX6R um, and I must admit you can really feel uh, the difference of that 30 odd extra cc the mid-range grunt is fantastic and certainly not what you'd expect from a bike of this class in my honest opinion the engine and gearbox on a 636 is pretty much perfect for a super sport class the brakes and suspension are good there's a little bit of room for improvement as is usually the case the bike stays well planted uh, when braking hard or entering corners at speeds and it holds its position on the road really well the short wheelbase makes tipping in and out of the corners really really easy and the bike just fills you with confidence to push hard in and out of the corners. As is the case with the majority of Japanese bikes, uh, the ZX6R is very well finished. Um, everything is built to last and for the most part the bike is really easy to work on. If you're in the market for an excellent value um, 600cc class machine, I would wholeheartedly recommend a 636 ZX6R. If given a preference, uh, I would personally favour a 2005 and 2006 bike like what we've got here or a 2003 and 2004 bike. From 2007 onwards, Kawasaki moved back to the uh, traditional 599cc setup, uh, which is a shame. The good news is the 636cc engine has been reintroduced to the uh, 2013 onwards ZX6R machine and that runs alongside the standard 600cc engine. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful, please do leave a like down below and consider subscribing to the channel. It really, really helps us out. Don't forget to get your name in the hat uh, to win the bike that's been featured in the video today. The links that you'll need are all in the description section. That's all for now. Take care and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.